Okay, folks, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the series so far because today we are going to stop with the little side quests and get back to the main quest. Um, there is one little detour that I'm going to take first, but it's along the way. Um, so again, you'll prop, you may recall Navi bugging us about uh, you know what Saria would think about all this, and maybe we should go back to the forest and blah blah blah. So that's obviously what we're gonna do. Um, but first, I want to take uh, one minor detour, as I said, up to Goron City because we haven't been there yet since uh, coming to the future. Um, so we want to just check out how things have changed in that area. And uh, I say it's along the way because you may recall that Goron City has a, uh, a portal that goes straight to um, the Lost Woods here. Let's see what happened here. I wonder what's going on in the forest right now. Yeah, I'm worried about Saria too. Yeah, so again, I just basically just finished talking about that. That's our, that's our prompt. Um, so let's go this way. Through Kakariko Village and up Death Mountain Trail. On our way, there's one thing I will point out along the way that also was kind of nice now that it's the future. And I'll just cut to the chase. It's going to be another one of those magic beans that we planted as a child is once again going to have sprouted and grown into a uh, magic bean leaf. Oh, this is kind of new, too. There's these uh, rocks and boulders rolling around. That wasn't here before. It looks like things have definitely gotten a little bit uh, more dangerous. So, uh, yeah. Whoa! Crap! <laughs> that was freaking close. Uh, boulder goes right into Dodongo's cavern. So yeah, um, you may recall planting the bean here. So now what we can do is we can use this for a couple things. First, we will use this leaf to just lift us up this away, and that will get us to a piece of heart that we couldn't get before. So that's convenient. And also, we'll drop down again, and we'll use the leaf again. First, we've got to wait for it to actually return. There it is. We can use this to quickly get up this way right to the entrance of Goron City and actually if we continue to ride it even longer than that it would continue to take us even further up the mountain so it would take us right to just being on the precipice of um, that footpath to get to the top of the mountain um, that you may recall last time we were there there were all kinds of like flaming boulders that were falling down in that area um, because of like the mountain is basically, you know, in a, almost basically a constant state of eruption, more or less. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, that's where it can take you, so it's even a quicker way to get all the way, not all the way to the top of the mountain, but, like, if you're, if that's where you're headed, you're trying to get to the top, that magic bean leaf cuts off a huge amount of time, and that actually is, uh, not to spoil it, but it's going to come in very handy, um, at a, a later point in the game. And look at this here, Goron City appears to have been abandoned. No Gorons around, except I can hear one Goron that's rolling around. But where the heck is everybody else? Nowhere to be found. Now, I'm actually going to come back to this at a later date, so uh, we'll explore that when it's more pertinent. But this is the real reason I wanted to come in here. As you may recall, our friend Metagoron, the last time we talked to him in here, remember we had a bomb through like four walls in order to get to him? Uh, he was talking about how he was working on something special, but it's not going to be ready in a while. Maybe try coming back in five or six years and it might be ready then. Well, it's in the future, so... Uh, and he's had seven years to work on it, so uh, let's see what this is all about. I just completed a small weapon. How about it? How about buying this knife for 200 rupees? Buy or don't buy? Well, I mean... He is a pretty big sized Goron, so for him, a knife is probably pretty big. So for us, it actually is like the size of a sword. So let's buy it. 200 rupees. Steep, but it'll be worth it. I hope. You got the giant's knife. Hold it with both hands. Use B to attack. It's so long you can't use it with a shield. So it's a two-handed sword. So... We can't use our shield, as it said, when we equip the giant's knife. But, of course, the trade-off is that it does double the damage. 
So that's pretty cool. Check out this. Whoa! Man, that thing is huge. So let's see this thing here in action. Alright, so it breaks pots. Pretty cool. And we can do a spin attack maybe. We'll try that. Alright. But, now, uh, frankly, we've been lucky. <laughs> um, because this is sort of the gag behind the giant's knife. Let me find something else to break. Let's go down here and see if we can find some, some pots, maybe. Yeah, here we go. So let's break these pots here with the giant's knife. Whoa! What the crap? The blade actually broke! This con artist, he's... He sold us this great amazing sword for 200 rupees and it broke. Now, again, there's kind of a further gag is that you actually can keep swinging it like you would with the sword. Um, and technically speaking, you can damage enemies if you like aim it just right, but it's so hard to get them. Like you've got basically like point blank range you gotta hit them with and 99% likelihood they're gonna hit you before you hit them. So it's basically all but useless. So. That kind of sucks. Look at that. Now we've got broken <laughs> giant's knife. So I think maybe we'll just go back to uh, equipping the master sword again. That sounds like a better idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, um, I just wanted to uh, show you that, that that's uh, something that um, exists in the game. And that uh, uh, if you're real careful with it, you actually can get uh, a few um, decent hits out of it. Um, but I wasn't going to... Uh, draw that out any longer than I really needed to. So if we drop down here... Oh, wait, hang on. First, that actually reminds me. I just heard the telltale sign of a gold sculptula. So, just so we don't forget it, we may as well get it while we're here. There's a gold sculptula hiding up there. So we can grab that. Alright. Is that... Uh, I just want to check my map here. See if that's... No, okay, we still don't have the gold sculpture marker, so there's still some to get in this area. All right. But anyway, um, remember this is the uh, shortcut portal right into the Lost Woods. And actually, while we're here, we can do a couple of things too, just uh, to take advantage of the fact that we're here. Um, first, I'm just going to go back to the Kokiri Forest. And uh, I'm going to quickly turn it to night. Because there's some more gold sculptulas that we can get in this area here. So there was one gold sculptula here that, again, only appeared at night. Oh, wait a minute now. Check this out. There's Deku Scrubs here. They weren't here before. That's right, I forgot we haven't even been to the forest since uh, coming to the future either. There's enemies in this area. Oh no, that sucks. This was like one of like the most like peaceful areas in the entire game. Whoa, look at this sucker! Big Deku Baba. When it l hit it when it lunges at you and it'll stand upright. So it's basically the same as a regular Deku Baba, but they're massive. So this area also has been like basically totally corrupted by Ganondorf's influence. All right, but anyway, I was saying, um, on the back of the uh, the house of the Know-It-All Brothers, this place here, right? If we return here as a child uh, at nighttime, uh, you can find a gold sculpture on the back here. Now, as an adult, we could find one again only at night. But if we come back to the back of, uh, I think this is Mido's house, or no, House of the Twins. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Yeah, back here there'll be a gold sculpture. Yeah, right here. And also, you may remember that there was another uh, magic bean that we planted over here, so we can take advantage of the fact that we now have a magic bean leaf grown up. And uh, this is um, honestly, um, it's kind of one of the more useless ones in the game, to be frank. Because really all it does is give you this little sort of a tour around the forest, so you get a nice view of the area. 
But ultimately, the only thing that it's really of any main use for is uh, coming up right at the end of its little flight cycle here, is it gives you access to this top shelf up here with some rupees on it that you couldn't get before. So, we'll grab the rupees. At least it'll help offset some of the cost of that stupid giant's knife. But other than that, that's really all that that one is useful for. Still in the spirit and interest of wanting to complete everything. It was worth planting the bean there for that sake anyway. But, uh, and I'm actually going to keep it nighttime here just for the moment. Because there will be something else that we'll be able to do here at nighttime. Again, uh, just to cut to the chase, it's going to be yet another gold sculptula. Oh, look at this here. Now, whoa. The Skull Kid got off the lock up there, and he's, like, attacking us. What's this all about? Well, we can kind of attack him. But that seems to have scared him off, at least. All right, well, took care of that. And here's this guy. He wasn't here before. No response, he's sleeping. So you may remember this was the um, the carpenter's son, um, who normally can be found sleeping at the uh, tree uh, in the main courtyard in Kakarika Village. Now he's located there. That's interesting. So here's another um, magic bean leaf. I'm just going to point this out to you that the reason why this is significant is we can use this for a quick shortcut to get quickly over to the bridge that connects the forest to Hyrule Field. Uh, now, we can't get off of here, so uh, what we can actually do here is we can, I think, do a backflip, and that'll... Oh, no, we can't even do a backflip to get out of here. Nuts. All right, well, fine. We'll just go back into the forest and go back around. That was really the only point of taking that little excursion, was just to show you that that magic bean leaf now exists. And that also is, at a later point, going to come in very handy, just the same as the magic bean leaf at Dongo's Cavern that takes you really quickly to almost the top of Death Mountain. But now, again, keeping it night just for a little while. We'll make our way over this way. Although before we can get to that spot, first check this out. Oh, look at this, it's Mido. And he's blocking <laughs> the path. We, we can't get past him into the rest of the woods. All right, well, let's talk to him here and see what this is all about. What are you? Though you wear Kokirish clothing, you can't fool me. I promised Saria I would never let anybody go through here. Huh. Well, maybe if we show him that we have some connection with Saria, that we know her, he'll recognize us as a friend of Saria, and then he'll let us pass. So, the way to do that, target him, take out your ocarina, and as you might have surmised, we play Saria's song. You remember, that's how it goes. That melody! Saria plays that song all the time. You, do you know Saria? That song. Saria taught that song only to her friends. Okay, I trust you. When I see you, I don't know why, but I remember him. <laughs> That's right, because you'll remember Kokiri are said to not grow up. And you'll notice Mido is still a child, appearing the same size and age as he was seven years ago, when we first knew him. Isn't that interesting? All right. Well, uh, basically where we're going eventually is the Sacred Forest Meadow. Um, but we're going to take a quick little detour out this way because you may remember this also is a place where we planted a magic bean leaf. So we can use this magic bean leaf to get up here where we couldn't before. And voila! Access to another Gold Sculptula token. Huzzah! All right. Now that we've taken care of that, we can finally make our way to the Sacred Forest Meadow, which is this away. Okay, so now that we're here, I'm going to turn it back to daytime.
Okay. Oh, no, this isn't that interesting. The last time we were here, we were greeted by a white wolfos that guarded the entrance, but now they're not here. So let's enter the hedge maze, but hang on here. What's Navi saying here? From here on out, we'll be, uh, from here on, we'll be going through some narrow passages. If you take it slow, maybe you can sneak up, sneak up on some enemies. Okay, so she's reminding us of how to kind of keep pointed in the same direction because it's, uh, that's useful for these kind of narrow corridors. She already gave us this little spiel when we were doing something similar in Dodongo's Cavern. So we already know how to do this, but it's nice to have the reminder. Anyway, so, whoa! That was close. We've never encountered this enemy before. That's weird. We can't Zed target these guys, but these are moblins. Basically, we can target them at their backs when they pass by us. Apparently, they've got really, really crappy vision. They can only see in a straight line. They can't even see us if we're off their direct pathway like that. So all you got to do is wait for them to pass by you and then target them with your hookshot like that and take them up pretty easily. However, you don't want to be caught in their line of sight because they do this charge attack. Wah! Oh, try to get out of the way there. But uh, yeah, so you see, um, that was uh, less than ideal. So we'll just wait here until this big oaf turns around. No object permanence whatsoever. Already forgot we were here. <laughs> I love that too. <Arr! laughs> I almost feel bad for that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, normally um, you may also recall the first time we were through here, it was uh, Deku Scrubs that were the enemies we had to uh, contend with. So we'll just move real slowly around there too, because again, I think moving too fast can cause a little too much commotion, and that can um, raise his awareness of us, and then he'll spin around and charge at us, so again, there's no rush here, just take our time, making our way... Nice and easy through the maze. Okay, so we can't get out of the water here, otherwise he'll see us and charge at us. So wait for him to turn around and target him with a hook shot. There we go. All right, so that wasn't too difficult. But now check this out. Oh, it's a huge moblin! Look at that, and he causes these shock waves that'll knock us right off our feet if we get hit by it. So, kind of the key is to just kind of alternate, right? With his hits on the ground, and then move in when it's safe to land a hit. Again, we still can't set target him for some reason. Whoa. Alright, took care of business there. All right, finally we're here. Remember, this was supposed to be Saria's secret hiding place. She appears hmm, to be mysteriously absent. Hmm, I wonder where she is. Hey, it's Sheik. The flow of time is always cruel, and speed seems different for each person, but no one can change it. A thing that doesn't change with time is a memory of younger days. In order to come back here again, play the Minuet of Forest. Oh, he's going to teach us a new song. Play the Minuet of Forest. Hmm. Now this is interesting, now that we're an adult and learning new songs, you'll notice right away that the songs are, not that this is a hard song to play, but they are m markedly more difficult and more complex than the other ones, because um, the other songs that we learn as a child are basically just three notes repeated twice. But now um, there's actually not a distinct pattern necessarily to some of these songs. Um, in fact, most of them basically, and in fact, all of them really, um, from memory. Um, so uh, they're a little bit trickier to play and a little bit trickier to remember. But again, nothing like impossible or anything like that. But anyway, just get used to that idea that they're going to be uh, not as basic. So that's how that song goes. So this is, again, play this song to return here. You 
have learned the menu in a forest. Jordan, I'll see you again. Ooh. That was freaky. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to give you right now just a quick little uh, demonstration of how this works. So, we take out our ocarina and we'll play that song that we just learned. You play the Minuet of Forest. Warp to the Lost Woods. So that's how this works now. It's basically a, a warp song. Whoa! So it, like, transports us into, like... Like, it totally atomizes us, and then magically transports us to, oh, look at that, right on top of this hexagonal hexagonal platform. Now, I pointed that out in a couple of places already that we've um, we've seen throughout Hyrule, and mentioned that uh, it looked like it was a point of interest, but we didn't know what it was all about. So now it finally becomes revealed that that's what these are, is these are sort of destination points for warp magic that we'll be learning throughout our adventure. So every time we play the Minuet of Forest, that will teleport us straight to this spot. So that's interesting. Alright, but now we're left with the question of where to proceed from here. Well, up here looks like it's the entrance to where we want to go. Um, but the stairs here are obviously broken off. We saw this last time we were here, though we were able to basically just ignore it. But uh, you'll see now that there's this overhanging tree limb here. And that's what the, it was all about with regards to having to get the hook shot. You'll remember that um, uh, Sheik originally told us that we couldn't even enter the area that we needed to get to um, uh, because we weren't well equipped yet. And so that's why he directed us to the graveyard to go get the hook shot. So that's what that was all about. We can get out our hook shot now and target that tree limb. We're still not close enough here, though. Let's get a little bit closer because remember it's got limited range. So there we go. As long as you can see the red dot, you know that you can hit your target. So load up our hook shot. There we go. And in we go. 